Hello everyone and welcome to PeopleSwap channel. Today we are continuing the PeopleSwap Procure to Pay series with episode 7. In the previous episode, we discussed about how to use the delivered PO auto source process to source a requisition into purchase order. So since we have learned about requisition sourcing, let me present a question for you. So suppose if we have a requisition with one line, when we run the sourcing process, we will have one PO with one line. Well, this scenario is quite simple and obvious. Now let me put the question for you. Suppose we have a requisition with two lines on it. Then when we run the sourcing process with requisition, how many purchase orders we would get? So for a requisition with two lines, would we get just one purchase order with these two lines or the requisition with two lines will get sourced into two different purchase order where each purchase order will have its own line. That means the lines of the requisitions getting split across multiple POs. Well, this scenario is quite possible and there are certain rules into PeopleSoft system which decides whether a requisition with multiple lines should source into just one single PO or the lines should be split across multiple POs. Well, that's the topic for today guys in which we will understand what is the setup required to achieve this functionality and there are different scenarios in which a multi-line requisition can source into multiple purchase orders. So we will see two of such scenarios in which a requisition will source into multiple purchase orders. So alright guys, this is me Samir and without further delay, let's start the discussion. So the first scenario is requisition lines with different suppliers. Let's see one example. So we have this requisition 290. This is an approved requisition and has a valid budget status. So this requisition is ready for sourcing. And if you see, this is a multi-line requisition with two items. If we go to supplier information, we can see that both these lines have different suppliers. Hence, this requisition matches the scenario 1 and let's see what happened when we source this requisition. So let's run the PO auto source process for this requisition. So I am inside the stage source request and this is the PO auto source process. So let's search for a run control ID and let's use this run control. So let's go to option and let's provide this requisition as a criteria because we do not want to process the other transactions. Hence, we will provide the requisition ID as a criteria. Let's save it and let's run the PO auto source process. All right. So right now for this requisition, we do not have anything in the staging table. Let's check the PO auto source process. So as we can see, currently it is in PO calculation status. So let's wait for the process to complete. The process has been completed successfully. So if we search it, now we can see the stage status is completed for this requisition. However, we can see we have two different purchase orders created. All right. So if we check the stage information, this is line 1 and this is line 2. For line 1, we got the purchase order number 437. Let me open it. And for line 2, we got the purchase order number 438. Alright, so this is the 437 PO with line 1. And this is the 438 PO for line 2. So why did this requisition with two lines got split into two different purchase orders? 
well the purchase order is for the supplier all right so a purchase order will have one supplier on it as you can see this po has the supplier id and this po has a different supplier id so this is the reason that a purchase order cannot be shared between two or more suppliers and that is why when we have such scenario where we have a multi line requisition with different supplier then the system will create a unique purchase order for each of the suppliers and the system will then dispatch the po to the individual suppliers this is because as we discussed purchase orders cannot be shared among multiple suppliers all right so this is the scenario number 1 now let me give you a second scenario in the second scenario we have just one supplier but even then the requisition line will get splitted into multiple purchase order so can you guess what is the second scenario well let me share that scenario with you so the second scenario is requisition having different ship to locations so this scenario will create more than one purchase orders all right so let us see one example so we have this requisition 291 which is an approved requisition and has a valid budget status so this requisition has just one line however if we go to the schedule information we can see that this line has got two different schedules and for this line one we have two different schedules with different ship to location all right so this is a case where the requisition has got multiple different ship to locations now to understand sourcing of search requisitions into purchase order we need to first identify a setup let me show you that setup so let's go to setup financial supply chain let's go to business unit related then we have purchasing and then we have purchasing definition so this is the business unit for which we are creating transactions and if we go to the business unit options we have the check box which says split po by ship to as of now this check box is not checked so let's see what happens when we source this requisition having different ship to ids so let's run the po auto source process for requisition 291 so let's save the changes and let's run the process if we check the sourcing workbench we are waiting for the process to complete so let's wait for the process so the auto source process for 291 is completed so just to clarify our requisition has only one line then why we are seeing two lines here in the sourcing workbench is because we have two schedules for line 1 so if we check this stage info we can see that this is line 1 and this is also line 1 however this is the schedule 1 and this is schedule 2 for line number 1 and we can see both of these lines got sourced into a purchase order however we have received just one purchase order so if we check this purchase order 439 requisition lines having different ship to ids got source into one purchase order if we go to schedule then these are the different ship to id now let's see what happens when we check this check box which says split po by ship to id so let's check this check box and let's save the changes all right now I have created another requisition 292 with the exact same details as the previous requisition. So this requisition is approved, has a valid budget status. This requisition has one line, 
and if we go to the schedule information it has two schedules with two different ship to id so since we have checked this checkbox let's see what happens when we source this requisition so again this is the po auto sourcing process let's provide this requisition id as a criteria let's click on save and let's run the PO auto source process. The process is currently processing. If we check the sourcing workbench, currently it is going through the PO calculation phase. So let's wait for the process to complete. Currently it is creating purchase orders. And finally, the state status is completed. So as we can see, we have got two different purchase order, each purchase order for each ship to location. Let's check the purchase order. So this is the purchase order for line one. If we check the schedule, this is the purchase order for ship to US 001. On the other hand, this is a different purchase order for the same item. However, if we check the schedule, this is for BLG01. So this is a scenario in which a requisition having multiple ship to IDs gets splitted into multiple purchase order. So these are the two most commonly observed scenario in which a requisition can be sourced into multiple purchase order. So if a client raise a ticket asking why this requisition has got multiple purchase order. I hope this analysis can be helpful for your reference. All right, guys, that's it for today's episode. In the next episode, we will start our discussion about purchase order in which we will understand the structure of a purchase order and we will see how it is different from a requisition. See you in the next episode. Thank you.